Hi YouTube! So here I am with a new video on my series about GNU slash Linux and PCI, PCI Express. Today I want to talk about base address registers or shortly BARS. So in my previous video I have already mentioned the different types of address space which are available on a PCI device. We have the configuration space over which we can get information about a certain device, for example from which vendor it is or um, which kind of device it is, and we can even change some settings over the PCI configuration space. But to control a device, we need its memory or I.O. space. So for example, if you think of a serial port on a PCI card, um, you can set the baud rate and write your bytes you want to send and read back the bytes you have received over the I.O. space of this PCI device. And the link between configuration space and memory or I.O. space are the base address registers. So they serve three purposes. The first one is to tell the CPU which kind of address space is available on a bar, if it's memory space or I.O. space. The second purpose is to indicate to the CPU how much space is available on a bar. And the third one is the CPU can map the PCI device's memory or I.O. space into its own address space by assigning a memory or I.O. address to the base address registers. So here I am on my laptop and I'm in my folder from my fork of PCI utils. And now let's check all the devices which are available on my system. Okay, and now I want to print out the header of this network controller here. For this purpose I have already written a program in the previous video called PCI header, which will serve this purpose and as arguments I have to give the bus um, the function, um, the bus is logged into the function number of the device I want to print the header from. So in this case it's 200. So we see our network controller is of course an endpoint and endpoints can have up to six base address registers. But of course not every device will use all six available address registers. So if a device don't want to use a base address register it can hardwire it to all zeros and, and so the CPU knows okay this bar is not used. Okay and we can also see the CPU already have assigned some addresses to the bars. So this here are the addresses of the bars. Okay, now let's do this again for bridges. One C0 is a bridge. Zero, one C0. And here we can see bridges only have two base address registers while endpoints have up to six. Okay, but now the next question is how can the CPU get the information which type of memory address space is behind this bar and how big is the available memory. Okay, to answer this question, I will take a look at the Wikipedia's article from PCI configuration space, and here we can find description of the PCI bar bits. And you have to know the lower bits of a bar are hardwired and the upper bits are read and writable. So bit 0 is hardwired and it will tell us whether we have memory space available, in this case it's a 0, or if we have I.O. space available, in this case it's a 1. And if it's an I.O. bar, all the rest of the bits can be used to set an address. And if it's a memory bar, bit 1 and 2 tells us whether it's 
a 32-bit bar or a 64-bit bar. So in case it's a 32-bit um, bar, the whole base address register can be used to set the address. But in case it's a 64-bit bar, um, 32 bits are not enough to set the address into one base address register. So in this case, um, our current bar will be used as the lower 32 bits and the next bar will be used for the upper 32 bits. And bit 3 indicates if um, the memory is prefetchable or not. So this is important for the CPU's caches because if um, a memory space is not prefetchable, it can't use caches for this memory. And now the remaining bits for up to 31 can be used to assign an address. Okay, so now we know how we can get the type of memory behind a um, bar, but how can the CPU know which the size of a bar is? And for this purpose, I will draw a little picture here. I have a graphic tablet connected to my laptop, so I can draw something here. So this here is a 32-bit base address register. OK. And I already told you the lower bits are hardwired, the upper bits are read and writable. And now let's imagine bit 0 is a 1. So we have a I.O. bar here. OK. And now we say the next 10 bits are set to all zeros. OK. So here we have bit 11. These are all hardwired. Hardwired. OK, and the rest is writable. And on startup, the base address registers are not assigned yet. And what the CPU does now is it will write all ones to the base address register. And this will lead that the upper bits will have a one in it. And the hardwired um, part cannot be written to, so it will still contain this value. So if we read back our base address register, we will get the value hexadecimal f f f f f zero zero one. And now what we are going to do is we have to clear bit zero for IO bar. If this would be a memory bar, we ha would have to clear the first four bits. But in this case, we can just clear bit zero. And now we invert our dverb, and we will get zero, 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 f, f, f. Now we will add a one here. So now we will get hexadecimal 1000. And this is the size in bytes, which is a variable. So we have 1000 hexadecimal or decimal 4096 bytes available on this bar. And this are 4 kilobytes. So with this way, we can get the size of a base address register. So that's it for today. In my next video, I will write a simple program which will print out the size and the type of memory of every bar of a PCI device. So thanks for watching and I hope I will see you in my next one.